I'm Johnny. And I'm Chachi. We're Get In Here Ministries. You know, a lot of people come up to us and ask us hard questions about God, the Bible, and spiritual living. And you know, while a lot of those questions are softball questions for us, there are actually some pretty good ones. One of them being, how do I have a better prayer life? Well, good news, we got some killer tips to a better prayer life. Before we do that, though, let's start off with a title and some dance moves. No, we're not doing the title and the dance. Let's just kind of get into this. When you're saying a prayer in public, you want to use the phrase Father God as much as humanly possible. Just last week, I said a 30-second prayer and got 17 Father Gods in it. So look, I'm not bragging. I'm just saying with a little bit of effort, it can be done. If you have a prayer request but don't actually want to request it, simply say, unspoken. I currently have six unspokens that I'm praying for this guy about. Johnny, sorry to bother you, but I actually have another prayer request. Okay. What? It's unspoken. <laughs> okay, well, that's seven. And while I have no clue what I'm praying about, Someone does. Just no one human. The Bible says pray without ceasing. And well, we believe in the Bible. Chachi has been praying without ceasing for over 32 hours now. Chachi, how do you feel? What? Who said what? Where am I? Well, Chachi, you have been praying for over 32 hours straight. You feel pretty good? Can I get a restroom break? <laughs> Not if you want to fully obey scripture. Let's say you become privy to some juicy information about someone, but don't want to be seen as a gossip. We've got good news. You're good to go if you put in the form of a prayer request. I still cannot believe what Jill said to Keith. I can't believe it either. Did you know that John got canned? What? Are you, are you... Let's talk about it in a prayer group. Some think your prayer position is irrelevant. But we have found that your prayer position can not only boost your prayer life, but can stretch you physically. Chachi, why don't you go ahead and show us some examples? Well, I wasn't really planning on praying, but I guess I can give it a shot. Oh, very nice. Good, that is classic. Wow. Seriously, wow. The last thing you do when you pray is fairly obvious. You say, Amen. And if you happen to be in a group of people holding hands, it's imperative that you accompany that Amen with a physical action known as the hand squeeze. The squeeze lets the people on either side of you know, Hey, the prayer's over. I care about you, but I'm letting go now. And when you are holding hands, never interlock, because that can make your prayer partners a little uncomfortable. We want to thank you for watching, or shall I say, growing in your prayer life. Yeah, now can we do the, the title and the dance moves? No, just kind of say thanks for watching. And That's seriously unreal. This is actually my miracle position. Hey guys, that video is a little crazy and a little... Uh, uh, some of the things just a little kind of hard to describe, but things that we actually do uh, when it comes to praying. Uh, the most important thing to remember about that is, you know, with our faith, God wants us to talk to him just like we talk to anyone else. Um, just like I talk to Troy, talk to friends, talk to other family members. Uh, we don't have, he doesn't require us to have eloquent words. Um, and sometimes we just don't even have to know what exactly to say because God knows the desires of our heart. And uh, today, we're, our point of our lesson is uh, the church is strengthened as we pray, as we pray for one another. And we're going to look at scripture um, from Ephesians chapter 3, 14 through 21. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. I pray that he may grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power in your inner being through his spirit. And that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, I pray that you, being rooted and firmly established in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the length and width, height and depth of God's love. 
and to know Christ's love that surpasses knowledge, so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do above and beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Hey guys, the, uh, the question this morning is, when, when have you enjoyed uh, being part of a group? Uh, it says the church is strengthened as we pray, uh, and especially as we pray for one another. Guys, think about being a part of a group. Um, if you're on a baseball team, a football team, basketball team, soccer, I, your team is strengthened if you show up. Just think about if you're one of the starters and you don't show up for a game, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be tough. You think about the, uh, the basketball that's going on right now. If somebody has coronavirus, uh, Ron James can't play, their team's not going to be that good. Guys, it's the same way with church. Uh, as, as we show up, as we're there, uh, as we pray for one another, it strengthens the church. And that's, uh, that's the way uh, God has intended it to be. Um, I want to talk about the, about the, about the Scripture, uh, from what Paul was talking about. Said, uh, it says, pray for others, uh, not just ourselves. The world teaches us to think with a me-first mentality. And, and you watch TV, you watch commercials, it's all, everything's about me. Uh, it's all focused on on yourself. It's not focused on on what can I do for others. It's focused on what what can I do. What what can I get out of it? Um, it says if we truly love others the way we should and the way Jesus does, we'll have them on our hearts and minds, and this will be reflected in our prayers. Uh, God wants us to pray for others, but He also wants us to pray specific. Uh, it's nice to pray, God help all the sick people in the world and things like that, but He also wants you to pray specific. God help. Help Susan. I know she's sick. I want you to uh, to lay your hands on her and take care of her. Uh, so general prayers are great, but specific prayers are, are, are good too. Um, it says pray for spiritual needs, not just physical needs. Uh, he wants to hear our physical needs. He wants to hear the desires of your heart, but he also wants you to pray for, uh, for your spiritual needs as well. It says when we pray that God would provide the things we need, we should be aware that our greatest needs are spiritual, to live by the Spirit, to love one another, to forgive and serve those in our lives, and to have the boldness to carry the gospel to those who don't know Christ. And guys, that's, that is important to pray for boldness. That's uh, Sometimes it is hard. You know, a lot of times you guys say that, and I do it too, uh, it's just hard to talk to these people because I just feel awkward when I do it. Ask God to give you boldness. That's what, that's what he does. That's uh, how he's, he's made you. Sometimes we are timid around certain people. Uh, sometimes it's harder around family members. It may be harder around people that you really know uh, very well. Pray for boldness. Pray that God will, will open up an opportunity that, uh, that you can kind of sneak in and, and somehow uh, start talking to them about Christ. Uh, it says, Paul included these thoughts in his prayer. Uh, in the scripture it says, we are rooted and firmly established in love. God loves us and he always will. Nothing can change that. Uh, it talks about the height and width, the height, excuse me, the length and width, height and depth of God's love. Uh, God's love is immeasurable. We'll never fully grasp it. As we spend time knowing him through prayer and Bible study, we can grow continually in knowing his love for us. And the third part is Christ's love uh, that surpasses all knowledge. Uh, and when you think about Christ's love, that's, it, it is hard. Uh, you know, we always hear about, you know, we know that, that Jesus died on the cross and that's the ultimate uh, love. But, you know, think about the love that we're familiar with. Think about the love that you have for your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Uh, you know, how is that? Well, I want to spend time with him. I just want to hang out with him. Um, the love that I have for my family, I, you know, I want that too. I want to spend time with them. Um, part of the way that I show love is I go to work uh, so I can provide for them. Uh, I, when uh, Landon was playing sports, I'd go to his games. Uh, when Lindsay moved to Nashville, I, I drove her out there to, to, to help her move out there. And, and of course, Chris did too. Um, they, sometimes I go to the store uh, with Chris just so I can spend time with her and be with her. Uh, I clean the house just because that, that's part of how you show love to other people. You do things that um, that you know will, will help them out um, because somebody's going to have to do it. But, uh, but it's, it's not fair for them to do it by themselves. But that, that's how you show love to other people. You do things that um, that, that, that show your love, basically. Um, and the last part says, here's the truth. Prayer is not about us. It's ultimately about God and his glory. Guys, the things that, uh, that God is able to do uh, is more than what we can ask. Uh, God has created all things. He knows all things. He can do all things. 
Nothing is too difficult for God. The same God who put the stars and planets in the celestial orbits are placed and placed every hair on your head, he also knows you by name. Our confidence is not based on the greatness of our prayers, but on the greatness of the one to whom we pray. And a lot of times I think as we go to church, you see people uh, just like what the, the video showed. You can use all these fantastic words, and I'll hear them too. And you're going, man, that's a phenomenal prayer. I don't even know some of the words they said. Um, but guys, it's not how eloquent your prayer is. It's not how wonderfully you pray. Guys, listen to your heart. He wants to hear what you have to say from your heart. It may not come out the same uh, as, as what some people with fancy words will say. But God knows your heart. And, and to God, that's a much greater prayer than, than a, bunch of, uh, a bunch of big words. Um, the second is our prayers are too small. Uh, it says we often fail to realize that God's plans and purposes are far bigger than our solutions to our life's problems. Uh, sometimes we just don't, I don't want to say we don't pray hard enough, but we pray for small things. God says, hey, I want, I want it all. Uh, I've got great plans for you, but I want to hear it from you. I want you to pray for me. Uh, it doesn't mean I'm not going to do them, but I want to hear your heart. I want to, I want to give you all these things. you you got little plans. I've got big plans. Um, that's the cool thing about God, is He wants us to, uh, he wants us to, to do some great things. Uh, it says our prayer should be focused on others, concerned with spiritual matters, and in pursuit of God's glory. Uh, there's one last thing, and I thought this was really neat, and it's, it's on the, the, the spot where it says live it out. It says many times even if someone is not a follower of Christ, uh, they appreciate knowing that a Christian is praying for them. It says, identify the needs of a non-believer and commit to praying regularly for them. Let them know that you're praying God's answers to your prayer. Let them know that you're praying God's answers to your prayers and go a long way in helping others see the truth about Him. All right, guys, it's what's really cool is if you have somebody that doesn't know Christ and you tell them, um, you know, I'll, I'll be praying for you. And don't do it in a way that's that's kind of weird. Um, but sometimes they'll even come up to you and they'll ask you to pray. They'll, they'll know that you're a Christian. I, the cool thing is if something happens, if God answers, and I'm saying if, but uh, as their prayers are answered, as, as things change and they see that, guys, they see that, hey, I know that you were praying for me. God answered your prayers. I, that's cool. All of a sudden they realize God does answer prayers. And there was a specific prayer that, that, uh, you know, don't just do general, hey, I'm praying for you, and be specific about it. And as that specific prayer gets answered, sometimes it opens their eyes to God. And they say, you know what, there is um, there is something about this God. I didn't understand it before, and I may not still understand it, but I understand that he's there. And I understand that, that there's power in prayer. And sometimes that's enough to start bringing people to church and to, and to want to be a part of, of something that uh, they didn't necessarily understand before. Guys, I hope, uh, hope you got something out of this lesson. Guys, prayer is powerful. Uh, God wants us to, to be in prayer every day. He wants us to, uh, to learn through Scripture uh, and, and kind of interweave that with prayer. Uh, but guys, um, be... I'm getting a sign from Chris. Um, but guys, be in prayer. Uh, constant turn prayer. everything over turn, to uh, him. There we go. Thank you. Yeah, turn everything over to God. Uh, not, just, not just your physical needs, not just the stuff, not just God help me with with my test today and, you know, you know, all those crazy things. Just, uh, you know, he wants you to be, uh, pray about spiritual things, pray about, uh, pray about others, pray about people in the church and, and, uh, and, and things that, that affect other people, not just you. So, you right. have a never ending prayer. You can pray have, without ceasing. Have never ending prayer, but you can go to the bathroom if you need to. So that's okay. All right. Thanks guys. That's all I have. Do you have anything else? That's it. Maybe okay. we should pray. All right, let's pray. All right. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that we have to, to spend together. And dear God, I just pray that, uh, that uh, eventually we'll be able to come back to, to Sunday school. But uh, until then, dear God, pray that you would just be with us. Um, thank you for uh, being able to, to, to link up on, on Facebook and on, online and, and to be able to reach out to one another. And, and dear God, just uh, be with all of us this week. Of course, in your name we pray. Thanks, guys.